In this video, we're checking out the latest MacBook Pro 16 M1 Pro for video editing. So I'm gonna run through a full video edit. I'm gonna import the footage into the computer, and then I'm gonna open it up and start editing through. This is gonna be 6K B-RAW, but I'm also gonna show you the results from 4K all the way up to 6K in different file types. And then I'm gonna show you export times on the screen. I'm gonna show you battery life results. Basically everything you need to know when trying to make a purchasing decision as a video editor. Now, to get us started, I'm gonna go ahead and load the project files into the computer from a Samsung T5 drive. This is a 121 gig project. This is all B-RAW at 12 to one. And I'm gonna see how long it takes to import that footage. So let's go ahead and open this up real quick. We're gonna copy and paste this onto the desktop. And that starts our timer. Okay, now one thing to note uh, also, if you're using the SD card slot, I already ran a test previously. So what happened was I took an SD card with 300 megabyte per second read and write speeds, put it into the laptop, and then loaded 23 gigs of VRAW footage onto the laptop. Now this took one minute and 46 seconds, which translates to about one gig per 3.6 seconds. So the transfer speeds for the SD card slot are very fast because for my editing rig, which has a Ryzen 9 3900X, took about 36 minutes to do that same 23 gig move. Uh, so it's a very fast SD card slot, which is good. It's not just, oh, hey, we have an SD card slot, but it's very much improved. All right, as we're continuing to wait for this to import, let's talk about dropped frames inside of Premiere Pro for different file sizes. You're gonna see those come up on the screen now from 4K all the way up to 6K and the different cameras and you know H.264 versus B-RAW versus ProRes. You'll see all those coming up on the screen now. Keep in mind that the different playback rates were done at full quality. Full project size was 16,177 frames. So the frames you're seeing dropped are out of 16,177. And this was used on the M1 Pro. I also have a video for the M1 Max if you wanna check it out. I'll link that up at the end of this video if you're trying to make a decision between each of these laptops. Now something else to point out is that this is done not on charger. Okay, this is on battery power. So literally the, the laptop is running at full performance on battery. And the craziest thing about that is the battery life that I was able to get for a 4K project running on loop inside of Premiere Pro was nine hours. Okay, that was a 4K project with Fujifilm H.264 full of motion graphics, a B-roll camera up top, a main roll camera in the front. And it did that for nine hours, which is absolutely incredible. So this laptop, the what you're buying is efficiency. Oh, there we go, we loaded. Two minutes and 22 seconds, 21 seconds, which is the exact same time the MacBook Pro M1 Max got as well. It took about two minutes, 21, two minutes, 22 seconds. So very fast load time, just loaded 120 gigs in about two, under two and a half minutes. So that is absolutely fantastic. Like I was mentioning, battery life is great. What you're buying is efficiency because there's other computers that can run as good a performance as these laptops, but you're just getting that efficiency when you're getting the MacBook Pros. Let's go ahead and open up the project and see how long it takes to open up Premiere Pro inside of this computer. And it opened in eight seconds with that little glitch of the... Uh, you know, do you want to rate Premiere Pro? No, I don't. So about seven seconds, six and a half, seven seconds without that glitch. Now we're going to go ahead and load some B-RAW footage into the timeline here. And then we will get moving on the edit. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set my color grade, set it on my 4K timeline. So I'm going to drop it down to 63% as far as the scale is concerned jump into my color grade. I'm gonna add that right here. Make this full screen. Okay, and we're gonna start at eighth quality real quick, and it should play back without any issues. Completely fine, no matter where you scrub to on the project, you scrub and immediately it starts playing without any issues. All right, let's move up to uh, half quality. Scrub through, it loads, no glitchiness as you can see. Uh, let's go ahead and start it here. Loads fine. Now 
Now when I have some motion graphics and then I go to hit play, it has a little bit of a pause. So if I do it with motion graphics, it's got a little bit of a pause and then it plays. All right, let's check full quality. And then I'm gonna check some more robust motion graphics to see how it handles those because my video editing rig, which is a Ryzen 9 3900X and a GTX 1660 Super struggles with these big heavy motion graphics. So we'll see how this one does. Full quality, a little bit of a, a little bit of a lag before it plays. So let's go. It lags just a tiny bit. Let's get where I'm talking so you can really see it. There we go, let's get my hands going up. So with the motion graphics, you can see that it does lag on full quality. So just, just like a tiny bit of lag there as it goes off. All right, now let's move on down to these motion graphics and let's see how well these, these load. All right, I'm gonna click right here into this motion graphic spot. So you can see as it hits those motion graphics, it kind of uh, slowly gets into them. Remember, we're at full quality here. And by the time it finishes, it didn't even load it. So it does struggle a bit with heavier Premiere Pro motion graphics. These are actual Premiere Pro. I think they're MGT, MO. MOGT files, if I'm not mistaken. And there we go. So now that it understands it, now that it's kind of populated it, it loads up faster on the second time. Oh, it, yeah, so there it loads there. Now let's try and actually edit one. That's often what can take some, some editing power. Let's click on it. Go to graphics. And it loads up pretty quick. Let's go to a new one. We up. Oh, we got a little bit of a rainbow wheel there for a second. All right, let's go to a new one. And... Yep, little rainbow wheel. And then it loads. Okay, so if you're gonna be using heavy Premiere Pro like motion graphics, these are very dense because they're kind of bloated. If you're using After Effects graphics, pulling After Effects graphics into Premiere Pro, they're gonna be less bloated. These are pretty bloated graphics. Most computers I use struggle with them uh, outside of maybe like the RTX 3080 doesn't have too much of an issue with these. But let's go ahead and pull it down to eighth quality, just for fun, to see how well it loads then. So, no problems. Oh, it's loading, it's loading. So even on eighth quality, what that's really ended up doing is it's really focusing on the timeline more than the graphics. When you do the graphics on eighth quality, they're still heavy, so it really doesn't change the visual appearance, it more changes the visual appearance of the footage as you're scrubbing through. And so if you have some really heavy footage, you can go down to eighth quality and it'll breeze right through it. If you really wanna watch it on full quality, you can do that, but when you do get to your motion graphics, if they're thick and bloated, it might take a little bit of power to get through those, as you can see the laggy load time. Okay, that's what we got for Premiere Pro. Let's quickly jump into DaVinci Resolve. Uh, and then we can see if this is the computer for your needs. Okay, footage loads in, no problem. Ugh. Okay, one thing, I know a lot of you have seen my complaint on this before, it, the trackpad is kind of glitchy. It's really, it's kind of annoying sometimes. Sometimes like it won't drag, like you'll, so that was a pretty far th place I had to drag, right? So sometimes it doesn't drag how it should in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and start the timeline. Looks totally fine. I'm really impressed on DaVinci Resolve, how optimized it is. Now, a lot of you say, well, this is B raw footage, Ben. Of course it's optimized. So let's go ahead and grab some 4K footage. We have a A7S 3 here. Change the timeline. And let's go ahead and hit play. plays without a hitch. So DaVinci Resolve, let's see, we'll scrub, let go, and it immediately plays. So DaVinci Resolve is optimized for playback, and I'll actually show you the export times on the screen right now as well. Now the export times for Premiere Pro, I'll pull up on the screen too here in just a second after the DaVinci Resolve one's clear. Regarding Premiere Pro, I'm actually seeing really good export times. Even though we're not on Apple Silicone, 
Premiere Pro is responding very well. As you can see, the export times from 1080p all the way up to 6K. Those are nine minute clips loaded into Premiere Pro and then exported out at full quality YouTube settings. So what happens is if it's 1080p, it's a 1080p YouTube export. If it's 4K, it's a 4K YouTube export. If it's 6K, what I do is I do a 4K YouTube export and then I click match source. So it's technically 4K settings, but then it's matching the source, so it's making it a larger export. So that's how those are done. Now, if you want more videos to help with your buying decision, you can click or tap the screen here. Otherwise, likes if this video has brought you some value and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.